Again, welcome to Java programming. And this is a Java programming course. And uh, today our lectures will be based on Java selection statements. So how we can again write a program that will make a decision. And uh, up to this stage, most of the program we are writing normally execute from up down in sequential order up down. And this time we are going to write a program that again will make a decision based on the conditions given. So our main objective in these lectures is to go through what we call the Boolean expressions. Then Java selection statement will go through the if and also the if else statement. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about switch statement and also nested if else statement. So first we start with the flow of a control. And here we say that unless specified otherwise, the order of a statement execution through a method is linear, one after the other. And normally the execution start from top down in sequential order or linear orderly. So the program will not make any decision. It may not branch to any direction left, right, up or down. Just the execution will take place in sequential order from up, down. And also some programming statements allow us to make decisions and perform repetitions. So in almost every programming language, we can have a selection statement which make it possible for the program or the statement to make a decision. Or we can have a statement that will make it possible to repeat the same tags as many times as we want. So for example, if I want to write a program to find a sum of numbers from one to 200, I don't want to add the numbers one plus two plus three up to 200. That would take very long. So in this case, I can use a loop, which we already covered in while loop. I will use a loop and I'm going to write only one statement to add two numbers and give the result back to the variable that stored there. Uh, the sum. And this statement will repeat until we reach 200. So we may have some condition that when we reach 200, it will, the condition will be false so that we get out of the loop. So these decisions are again based on Boolean expression. And we use the term logical statements, logic. Boolean expression or logic means either true or false one or zero. One means true, zero means false. So most programming language or a conventional programming language, the decisions that are going to be made is only two, either true or false logic. So conditional statements. We say a conditional statement, let us choose which statement will be executed. If the condition is true, then the statement that follow the condition will be executed. If condition is false, we may have another option else the false will be executed. So there are sometimes this called the selection statements. Conditional statements are also called selection sta statements. Again, this gives us the power to make a basic decisions in Java conditional statement, we have if, if else, and also switch statements. So if is one way, which means if a condition is true, we do something. If else means we have two ways. If a condition is true, do something. Else, do another thing if the condition is false. Again, we are going to go detail a little bit on this. Then we have the nested if else and also switch statements. In this case, we if we have more than two conditions, let's say five, 10, any amount of conditions, it's good to use nested if else. Or we can use the switch statement if there's no interval between the values. And what I mean by interval is that, for example, I can say, okay, if score is greater than uh, 50, 
and do something else if score is greater than 60 do something else else if score is greater else if so we may keep more than two conditions which we call the nested if else yeah, so now if i'm using if else i can use the relation operators but if i'm using the switch statement i cannot use it and we will explore that detail later on so in order to write a conditional statement in java i will need what we call the relational operators or equality operators and these are the operators we use these operators to create a logical conditions so we have the equal again in java one equal sign means assignment i'm assigning a value on my right to a variable on my left but if i want to check if the variable have a value 20 if 20 equal to the content in the variable then i have to use the equality so equal there's no space between this other operators here so if I want to check if two items are equal, I'll use equal, equal. Or not equal, the exclamation with equal sign, no space. Or less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal. These are a total of six relational operators with the equality operator. So here they say we should know that the difference between the equality operator and the assignment operator, as I said earlier, assignment means I'm giving a value to a variable. I'm assigning a value to a variable. But equality operator means I'm checking if the value is equal to a specific value given to us. So this example given, uh, the sentence keyword is if, if. So if is a keyword. The sentence for if is that we have used the keyword if, then we have our condition. So what we are trying to say is that if the variable sum is greater than the mass, which means the variable sum have a content, let's say a value 20, and the mass value is 70. And I said that if 20 is greater than 70, then do something. Since 20 is not greater than 70, I'm going to skip this statement, then continue in the next line. But if the condition is true, if for example, sum is 10 and mass is two, is 10 greater than two, yes. If that is the case, subtract the value of mass from the sum and assign the result to a variable named delta. So this is again the if statement. If statement is only one way. So the sentence is the keyword, everything lowercase, I, F, lowercase then the condition. The condition always is good to have it in a parenthesis, which make the readability more better. So if my condition is true, I'm going to assign the difference of sum and mass to a variable named delta. So here we say first the condition is evaluated. The value of sum is either greater than the value of mass or it is not. If it's greater than, then we are going to assign the difference of the values of sum and mass to delta. If the condition is false, which means sum is less than the mass, then we skip our statement. We cannot make the difference of the two values. So let's see an example of a program named h.java. So demonstrate the use of an if statement. Uh, here we are going to ask the user to enter an input, so we are importing java.util.scanner. Our main class is again age, so that's why the file name also is age.java. Now we are going to read user's age and print comment accordingly. So this is our main method, public static void main string argument, string array argument. So we declare the constant variable name minor. The data type is int. And as we said earlier, anytime you declare a constant variable using the keyword final, it means that value is constant, cannot be changed. So that's why you can see when we declare variable constant, we have to initialize the value. 
if we didn't if we don't initialize the value then we're going to get an error so here we say fana int variable name manual we assign 21. we are going to ask the user to enter input so we create a a scanner object name scan. So using the scanner with argument of system dot in means we are going to get the input using our keyboard. So now we ask the user to enter his age, enter your age. Then we use the scan object. Uh, age will be integer, so we use the next int. So scan dot next int we get an input from our keyboard and we are going to install the input into a variable named age. Now we are going to compare if the age of the person, the user, is either greater, equal, or less than 21. So if it's greater than 21, then it's, a, it's not a minor, it's an adult. So next, we say system.r.println, you enter the age, so whatever age we enter in the previous. Now we are going to compare. If the age is less than minor, then we say youth is a wonderful thing. Enjoy it or enjoy. So here we're trying to say that the age is way less than 12 because minor is a constant variable in the previous slide. It's a constant variable declare. Anytime you declare a constant variable, you have to initialize it. So this is the output we get. We enter 47, and we tell the user that he enter 47. This is our first system dot out. Since you enter whatever age you enter. Now we compare the age with a minor, if remember the age is 21. So it's 21 less than whatever 47 we enter here, that's true. So we're going to print out, youth is a wonderful thing, enjoy. And also age is a state of mind. So next, we're going to talk about logical operators. Again, in selection statements, there are two major operators that we need to know. The expression always is logical, or the condition is always logical. So we can use the relational operators and equality to construct the condition. Now, when I have more than one condition, let's say if we have two conditions and I want to combine, then I can use the logical operators. So Boolean expression can also use the following logical operators. The first one is the logical not, which is negate. If something is true and we say not true, then it's false. Then we also have the logical end operator, which is like double R percent. Here we are trying to say that if I have two conditions, all the conditions have to be true in order to execute the expression that follows or the statement that follows. If one of the condition is true, the output will be false. Then we have all. All means only one condition has to be true. I need students that their grade, their grade is greater than 90 or they are from Brooklyn, which means either condition we still get an output true. But if I say I need a student that their grade is greater than 90 and they are from Brooklyn, it means both conditions have to be true in order to get a true. So here we say they all take Boolean operands and produce a Boolean result. Logical not is called a unary operator because it takes only one operand, like not true, not false, or not 50, means it can be either greater than 50 or less than 50, but not equal to 50. Also logical not, logical n and 
logical or a binary. So binary means we need two operands. X is greater than 20. But logical dot is unary, which is not false. The answer is true. So the, let's start with the logical operation. So first we start with the logical knot. We say the logical knot operation is also called logical negation or logical complement. So to negate or complement something means we get it opposite. If it's true, then it's false. If it's false, true. Big, small. So logical knot against to negate. If some Boolean condition a is true, then not A is false. Or if A is false, then not A is true. So here we have the true table for the logical not operator. A and not A. So if A is true, not A is false. If A is false, not A is true. So next we go to the logical n and also logical or. So in the logical n expression, we said it's true if only both a and b are true. Otherwise it's false. So if one is true, one is false, they are put to be false. And if both of them are false, the output also will be false. So we only get true once. That's when both conditions are true. Then we go to the logical or operation. So all operation means A or B. So only one condition has to be true in order again to execute. So this is the true table. So here I have two conditions. One is A, one is B. If both of them are true, then A and B will be true. A or B also will be true. Now, if A is true and B is false, remember one of them is false. So this means A and B will be false. But A or B will be true because if it's false or true, we get two output, either false or true. So <coughs> it will be true. Then true false and false true for all operator is always true. For n operator, it's always false. So this is the if statement again. Uh, again, as we said, the sentence, we start with the keyword if, then we have our condition. Then the statement is the body of the method. So this is again the logical if statement. As we see in the previous slide, if a condition is true, then the statement is execute, as the statement doesn't execute. So same thing we have here. If condition is evaluated to true, then the statement will execute. If the condition is false, then we move we jump from there, we come out of the loop and we keep going. So we have a question is, they say we should do the following statement. If total not equal to stock plus warehouse, we assign true to inventory error. Or if found or not done, then we say system.r.println is okay. So this is the solution here. We say set the Boolean variable to true if the value of the total is not equal to the sum of the stock and also the wells. So here we have if found or not done, it's okay. So print okay if found is true or done is false. The next is the if else statement. So if else, if it's only one way, condition is true, execute. If condition is false, then we don't test it. But again, 
in uh, if else we have two ways now we have when the condition is true statement one will execute else the condition is false statement two will execute so here we say the else clause can be added to an if statement to make an if else statement so if condition is true we have statement one as statement two so here we say that if the condition is true of course statement one will execute if the condition is false statement two will execute so let's see an example here using the if else so here we have our a program name wages.java we import the java.test.number format then java.util.scanner so our main class name is wages and also the file name is wages.java. So first thing we do, read the number of hours work and calculate wages. So we have the rate and also we have the standard. We create a scan object new. Then we declare a variable double and name is pay. Initialize it to 0, 0.0. So first thing we do, we ask the user to enter the number of hours work. We use the scan.nestInt to enter the number of hours. Then next we say pay over time at, at time and half. So if hours is greater than standard, then the pay will be standard times rate plus hours standard times rate. So logic of if else, we can see it's two way. If the condition here is true, then statement one is going to execute. If the condition is false, then statement two will execute. So we have a class named the coin class, which we cover in a previous uh, object-oriented programming. So let's look at a, an example that uses the class that represent a coin that can be flipped. So here we say the instant data is used to indicate which face, whether the head or tail, is currently showing. So here we have the coin flip class. We have our main method. We have a default constructor. Then we say my coin dot flip. Then system dot dot print ln my coin. Now we say if my coin my coin dot is add is zero, nothing. Then we say system dot dot print ln you win, as you lose which will be a better luck next time. So we're also going to represent a coin with two sides that can be flipped. So here we have a class name. This will be the service class, uh, class name coin. We have two variables, the head and tails, zero and one, both of, again, both of them are constant of using the keyword final. Then we have private int face. So first we're going to set up the coin by flipping it initially. So I'm going to call the coin so since we can see the coin is a class name coin. So this will be our constructor. The next, we're going to flip a coin by writing a method for it. Here, the method will not return no value to the final. So the keyword is void. And what we are doing here is that we want to, if we flip the, that is going to generate a number, use a mat dot run random times two.
And then the second is to check, return true if the current face of the coin is head. So it's head, we return face equal to head. Otherwise, uh, nothing is returned. The next is return the current face of a coin as a string. So we know to string method is a special method that anytime we have our uh, object and there's an item that you have to be displayed, we can call it to string. Uh, actually, to string is called automatically when we have system.out.println is called. So to string normally represent the object as a string type. We also have what we call the block statement. Block statement normally happens, as we can see the example here. If I have two statements and I didn't put the parentheses open and close, what will happen is that if the condition total greater than mass is false, again, I don't have no parentheses. So error count plus plus will execute. <laughs> if it's true, then both will be executing together. So again, that's the whole concept of a block. If I have a condition and I'm going to have more than one statement based on the condition, then I will make that at least two we are seeing here. So this is an example. We have a class name guessing. So play a simple guessing game with a user. We have our main method. We declare variable as a constant variable using the, using the keyword final. We initialize the value mass to 10. And we declare two more variables there. Answer and also guess. So we create our object first, scanner. Scan equal to new scanner system dot in. Then we randomly generate numbers. So we have new random generate numbers to random operator. The next int mass dot generator plus one. And that will be the answer. So here we're going to print system dot dot print. I'm thinking of a number between one and mass. Guess what it is? So I use the scanner object to get the input. Then we compare if the guess is equal to the answer. If it's true, then we have you got it, good, good guessing. Else, if the condition is false, we go through these two statements. Well, this is the output we get. As we can see previous, uh, this is the program, our mass is 10. We have guess, we generate values. Mass is 10, so we generate values from one to 10, instead of zero to 10. Then after that, we print our state. I'm thinking of a number between one and a mass. Guess what it is? So we ask the user to enter it. Then we check the guess is the same as the mass. The answer, guess is the same as the answer. If it's true, then we keep going. Or if it's false, then we execute the second state to system dot add dot print and then that is not correct, sorry. Or the number was not uh, the answer. And that's the output here. And the last session, we talk a little bit on the nested if statements. Now, if I have more than two conditions, most likely I will use switch or use nested if statement. So here we say a statement is executed as a result of an if or else clause could be another if statement. These are called the nested if statement. So an else clause is matched to the last or match if. And here we say no matter what the indentation implies. Also, braces can be used to specify the if statement to which the else clause belongs. The whole goal here again is to be able to organize 
our program that uh, So let's see the example here. Import your dot uh, Java dot util dot scanner. Our main class name is main of three. So the program name is main of three. So we have user to enter three integer values. And we have num one, num two, num three. Then num four will be a mean, we initialize it to zero. We create our scanner object, which we call the scan. Then we use it to enter the three values. Next, we are going to check which value is less or bigger. So we start with num one is less than num two, and num one is less than num three. So this means we are going to assign num one to mean. Num one is the minimum value. Otherwise, we assign num three to mean. Then we are also assign num three to num two, which means again num three is bigger than num two. So this will be the conclusion of our, our lectures on selection statement. We didn't go through uh, we didn't go through much of the lab work. And we may do that next lectures. And so wish everybody the best and thank you.